Hello Year 11 and welcome to another edition of Remote Learning in Physics. As always, let's begin with retrieval practice. Number one, what is reflected sound called? Number two, which direction are the oscillations in a longitudinal wave? Number three, what equation is part of Newton's second law? And finally, the time taken for half the radioactive nuclei in a sample to decay is called what? Looking at the answers, reflected sound is of course an echo. Longitudinal waves have oscillations or vibrations which are parallel to the direction of energy transfer. Newton's second law accompanied by F equals MA force equals mass times acceleration and the time taken for half the nuclei to decay is called the half-life of a material or isotope. In today's lesson we're going to take a look at the wave equation. To recall it, to describe the relationship between frequency and wavelength and to apply and rearrange the formula. Before that however here is a wave with some information so let's try and figure out what the features of that wave are. So what is its wavelength? Well, we can see two complete waves there. The total distance is eight meters. So one complete wave would be four meters. The complete height of that wave is three meters. Amplitude is half the height, which is 1.5. This is happening in a six second uh, period of time. So if there's two waves in six seconds, the time period for one wave would be three seconds. And the frequency then would be one third, one third of hertz. So wavelength can be long, wavelength can be short. If we're looking at something like light waves, where they all travel at the same speed, we can look at the relationship between the length of the wave and the frequency or the number of waves per second. So let's look at the relationship between the wavelength and the frequency. Both of these waves will travel at the same speed. Frequency is defined as the number of waves, complete waves, passing a point per second. So if these waves are moving along, we count the number of waves passing uh, and we can determine how many pass in a second. So this is just for illustration. So as you can see, in the longer wavelength, the number of waves passing is much smaller than in the shorter wavelength. So the frequency of the shorter wavelength uh, waves must be. So taking these two waves as an example, if each of these passed uh, a point in one second, that longer wave one has got roughly three waves, which is slightly more. So we could say uh, it has a frequency of about three hertz. That shorter wavelength one, if that passed in one second, there's just about eight waves there, so eight hertz. The shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency. In fact, frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional to each other. We can summarize this relationship in what's called the wave equation or wave speed equation. So wave speed is equal to the frequency multiplied by the wavelength. Wave speed is measured in meters per second, frequency in hertz, and wavelength in meters. As a symbol equation, V equals F times lambda. So that new letter is called lambda. That is the symbol for wavelength. And it looks a bit like an upside down Y. It is a Greek letter. So worked example, if a splash makes three ripples per second, a, the frequency and the ripples are six centimeters apart that is the wavelength how fast will the ripples travel so let's get rid of that animation it's making me dizzy so three ripples per second inputting that into our equation we would get three times 0 0.06 because we need to measure wavelength in meters which gives us 0.18 meters per second 18 centimeters per second approximately. 
Here are some calculation questions for you to practice. Uh, you can practice using the equation and then rearranging it. Feel free to use and make a formula triangle. Remember that for a formula triangle, it's always the one by itself uh, that is on the top. So wave speed is at the top. The frequency and the wavelength will be on the bottom. So usual rules apply for formula triangles. Cover up what you want and see what's left. Top divides by bottom, left multiplied by right. In question two, you are trying to rearrange to find uh, wavelength and then try the examples. And in question three, we're doing the same for frequency. On the next slide, we will show the answers to this one. And here are the answers to that section. You may check them against your calculated values. Uh, here are some more practice questions. Choose a set of appropriate difficulty. Uh, red is the easiest, yellow is more difficult, and green is the hardest of all. Please watch out for traps. We will always need to have the correct units when calculating, so watch out for things that are in the wrong unit, such as centimetres, kilohertz, etc. And don't use those. Answers will be on the next slide. And here are the answers to those questions. Please note that you may answer in standard form for uh, very small or very large values if you wish. Finally, then we get to our apply to demonstrate task. There are three questions. Please answer them in your class notebook and use the mark scheme at the end to self assess your answers. So in the first example, there is a earthquake wave called a P wave. For non-triple students, you will not know much about P waves, but a wave is a wave is a wave. So we need to calculate the frequency. There are four waves in 10 seconds there. You have one, two, three, four. So let's break that again. It's one, two, three, four. Yeah, approximately four waves. So it's two and a half waves per, per two and a half seconds per wave, that is. So a time period of 2.5 seconds using the relationship between frequency and time period we get a value of 0 0.4 hertz yeah so one divided by two and a half the equation is of course wave speed is frequency times wavelength you may use the symbols but you must use the exact symbols as shown by the exam board finally then calculate the wavelength of that earthquake wave so it's traveling at 7,200 meters per second. Rearranging for wavelength, we get uh, the wave speed divided by the frequency. So 7,200 divided by 0.4, giving us 18 kilometers or 18,000 meters. Earthquakes are extremely long waves. Question two, uh, difference between transverse and longitudinal for one mark. Discuss the oscillations in a longitudinal wave. For the second mark, discuss the oscillations or vibrations in that wave. Part B, calculate the wavelength of radio waves. Again, this will require rearranging of the equation. So we put down our formula, input some values, and rearrange to find wavelength. Alternatively, you can rearrange the letters first change the subject in that way, and then input values, AQAs, mark schemes, tend to input values first. Uh, some of you may find that more convenient. So point zero six two five meters. Finally then, uh, very large numbers involved here. Please note that for very large calculations, you cannot do them on a basic calculator. You need a scientific one to input the correct number of zeros or to use standard form. Notice in this question, there was a trap. They gave the wavelength in centimetres, which needs to be converted to metres first. So inputting your values, it's 3 by 10 to the 8. 
you know, 300 million divided by 0 0.02, which gives uh, a wavelength of 1.5 by 10 to the power of 10 hertz or 15 billion hertz. And that brings us to the end. Thank you very much for your attention. As always, don't forget to use all the available resources on Microsoft Teams, on Century, and looking at Seneca for basic revision. Thank you. You've been a lovely audience, and we'll hear you or see you next time.